Tanya Fissa and today we're going to show you how to make some of these awesome spiral pavers for your garden. I've made three, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it step by step. And remember everything that we need to make these spiral pavers is available from your local builders. This is what you're going to need to make your spiral pavers. A piece of shutterboard that's about half a meter by half a meter, a template and that can either be made from a computer or you could hand draw it and cut it out in order to get the shape that you desire some fine river sand, some cement, and you're gonna need some galvanized metal strips. Now you can buy the metal strips in literally a sheet which you'll then cut up into the strips which need to be 50 millimeters in height. You're going to need 75 millimeter nails. The tools that we require for this project is a pencil, a pair of tin snips, a hammer, pliers, and a builder's trowel. The first thing that we need to do is take our template that's either been designed on a computer or could simply be hand drawn. Once that's been cut out, you're going to take a bit of prit, pop it on to the back of it, just like that, and we're going to stick this onto a piece of shutterboard that's about half a meter by half a meter. It's important that wherever you're going to be making this, that you intend to leave the shutterboard in that place. If not, it's going to prove really difficult where you need to move it once you've got the concrete in there. Once your template's stuck in place, you then need your hammer and your nails. And all you're going to do is start with your first nail right there at your corner point and just bang it in a couple of millimeters. And all you're going to do is follow the template round with the nails on either side. Remember, the nails are actually going to hold your galvanized strips in place. Once your nails are in place, it looks a bit confusing, but don't stress, because at this point, you're going to take your galvanized strips that, remember, were cut from a sheet of galvanized steel, because this is how you buy it. You buy it in a sheet, and then all you're going to use is a pair of tin snips, and you cut them pretty easily. I mean, look at that, it goes through just like paper. So you're going to cut those into strips that are 50 millimeters in height and as long as you can. In order to start it off, the best way to do it is to take it and fold it against each other so that you get a nice crease in one of your strips. And that is going to be your starting point, which is going to be the first nail that I put in right in the beginning. So we pop that little guy in here. And our galvanized sheeting is literally just going to take the shape of our mold. And we feed that all the way around. And simply just follow the spiral. When feeding the galvanized strips around, it sometimes can get a bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be just fine. Where you need to join one up with another one, you'll see like this little guy's ended over here. Remember, we're following the same principles. So get your bend, get your crease in it, pop it round, and then all you're gonna do is literally just feed it round it again. So it just forms a bit of an overlap. Your overlap doesn't need to be all that long. And the best way to keep it in place is simply just to hook it underneath the nail or you take another nail and you just tack it in on the side. And then it's gonna end up looking like this. So here we've got our spiral starting there, going all the way around. And sometimes it does kind of tricks on your head, but just follow the nails like the yellow brick road and it'll all be okay. So once we've done that, we can literally now remove our little mold, our little template, which was on the inside. You can take that off now because you no longer need that um, because this is going to be the guidelines for your actual mold. So once we've done that, we can now start to get our mixture ready. And this is how we do it. Right, our mixture is a very simple one. We're using three parts fine river sand to one part cement. Now, depending on how big a batch you're going to be making, that will depend on whatever you're going to be using as your measuring volume. So here I'm just using a jug because I've only got one spiral to create. So in it goes, I'm going to be using three parts of river sand. 
So that's one jug. Two. Three river sand and then one cement. Pop that in and then mix it well until you get a good even consistency. Once it's mixed through, you can start adding the water. Remember, we're wanting a thick yogurty texture, so go gentle with the water, don't add too much. So rather put in little bits at a time and then just add as and when needed. And here we have that beautiful, thick, ah, yogurty texture, and that's just what we're looking for. Now we're literally going to take it, and one of the easiest ways to do it is actually to take a little garden spade like this, and you start putting it into the areas that have been marked out already, and you're literally just going to take it, pour a bit in, that's it, and carry that on all the way around until you filled up your spiral. Once you've filled it to the top and filled all the cavities, all you've got to do is simply just tap the edges of your mold because that's just going to get rid of any air pockets. You can even then just give the board a little shake as well. Don't get too stressed out if this isn't exactly smooth because remember, when you take this off, you're going to turn it upside down and the smooth edge will be the one that's been on your shutter board. So now we leave it to dry for at least three to four days or depending on what the weather's doing and remember every now and then to just throw a bit of water on it because that sucks up the water and really strengthens your concrete mixture. Also a good advice is just to put a bit of black plastic over it because that also does just slow down the curing process and make it that much stronger. Let's show you one that we made a bit earlier and check out how it's all dried. So here's this baby of mine. All I'm going to do is move that guy out the way take a look at that. So that's now how it's dried. All that we do now is start removing the nails and to remove the nails because we didn't lock them in all that deep is you simply just take the pair of pliers and wiggle them a bit and out they come. Last nail to go and look at that as you do that so the galvanizing strips simply just slip off there we go, pop them out, and that can all be used again. And here we have one times awesome spiral paver, smooth side, looking gorgeous. All it needs now is a good spot in the garden, which I've already chosen. Remember folks that with your spiral pavers you can be creative and create spiral pavers that are two and a half meters wide if you want. It really is up to you. This is a nice little baby guy and of course you can use that same mold to create loads and loads of them. So it really is about using your space, how much garden you have and really how much you want to be creative. So once your spiral paver is dried, all you've got to do is find a spot for it in the garden. Here are my three, they're looking fantastic. Remember the various options are, you can either plant in between them or you can just use some gravel. Remember whatever you do, place them in an area that's going to get the attention because they really are funky. Really easy to make. And remember everything you need is available from your local builders. Get out there and make some for yourself. And remember, everything that you're going to need for today's project is available from your local builder's outlet.